in this uh, animation video, I would like to show you in an attractive way the photoelectric effect discovered by Dr. Albert Einstein. He directed a monochromatic beam of light onto a metal surface and out came electrons from that metal surface. It was a very great experiment and in terms of input and output, we can understand that the input here is the light beam impinging on the metal surface. The output of this experiment is the electron coming out from the metal surface. Let's understand what's happening here in the following slides. We start with a metal surface placed on a block and we take a light source and it should ideally be a monochromatic light source in the sense that it should be of a single wavelength. It could be blue light, violet light or red light that will help to control the experiment in terms of the input and output. Just to recall, we have to give an input light beam and the output we are looking for is electrons getting released from the metal. In the slide we see that the incoming beam is of the blue color or we can consider that as a violet. So in the vib gyor spectrum, violet has the highest frequency and red has the lowest frequency. So Einstein was able to prove in his photoelectric effect experiment that the violet or blue light which has the highest frequency also gives the maximum energy to that metal surface. And if we use a red beam of light, a monochromatic red color which has the lowest frequency, it would give the lowest possible energy to the metal surface and we will later on see how this affects the electrons coming out. In this sketch we see a white stream of particles coming out from the metal surface. These are the electrons coming out from the metal. So the input energy from the violet light excited the atoms on that metal surface. Inside the atoms there are electrons. The electrons got the energy from the light beam and some of them escaped from the atoms. The atoms became positively charged as a result of losing electrons. Some electrons therefore got attracted back into the atoms. But if the energy is high enough, then the electrons will escape from that metal surface and start streaming out. This is what you see in this particular sketch. In this schematic, we can see that photoelectric effect is explained when a beam of light of a sufficiently high frequency hits a metal plate and electrons are thrown out of that metal plate. But why is the word photo and electric in this uh, particular phenomenon? The photo stands for light, so we put a beam of light on the metal surface. The electric comes from the fact that if the electrons, which you can see are traveling upwards, those orange arrows, if they strike a electrode, another electrode, then you will have a current flowing in the opposite direction. So electrons going upwards means the current would go from top to bottom. So therefore, by shining a beam of light, if you can cause a current flow, you got the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect put a big question mark on the purely wave theory of light because the kinetic energy of the outgoing electrons were not proportional to the increasing of the intensity of the incoming light beam. The outgoing electrons kinetic energy was increasing only by increasing the frequency of the incoming light beam. Therefore, it appeared that energy is proportional to frequency. Therefore, Einstein said that the incoming light beam must be consisting of particles of photons whose energy depends on their frequency. The incoming energy does not depend on how much intense the light beam is. So that killed the wave theory. So energy of the incoming light beam photon or quanta or packet of energy was E which is proportional to frequency, E proportional to F. So E was equal to HF, therefore H became a proportionality constant and that's known as the Planck's constant. In this schematic, we explain that when the incoming beam of light puts energy into the metal surface, 
the energy gets divided into a phase one and a phase two. The phase one goes to just releasing the electrons from the atoms of the metal such that they don't fall back into the atoms. If the energy is not sufficient, the electrons will come out from the atom, the atom will become positively charged and it will attract back the negatively charged electron and the story will be over. So phase one has to be good enough to release the electron. That's called the work function. And if we put in more energy, that energy will go to increasing the velocity of electrons. The velocity becomes positive, kinetic energy also becomes positive. Therefore, the maximum kinetic energy of the electron, which is Ke max, would be equal to the input energy of the light beam minus the work function for that metal. And the work function, as we saw on the last slide, is just that minimum amount of energy needed to kick out the electron from the metal surface with a zero kinetic energy. This equation is called the Einstein's equation of the photoelectric effect. Now we revisit the animation that we saw in the beginning. We can appreciate it better now. We can uh, understand the input light as a monochromatic high frequency beam and out come the electrons from the metal. We have overcome the work function. We have given more energy to the electrons. They are streaming from bottom to top in this particular sketch. So we can expect the current to be flowing from top to bottom. So we have the photo and we have the electric part of the effect. And I hope you appreciated the uh, learning on the quantum theory of light. Thank you very much and uh, have a good day. I also welcome you to log in to the website physicsmodels.in. Bye-bye.